when Nancy Drew, The Haunting of Castle Malloy, released for PC, um, the game featured a top-down walking system where the character would walk in their environment and discover uh, objects and puzzles and things in their environment. Uh, and it was a really cool, interesting system that involved Nancy, uh, the player controlling Nancy in a top-down fashion and exploring certain objects in their environment. It was a new take on Nancy Drew Adventure Games, and what I plan to go through today is to show you how that works. Again, this video is not monetized. This is just for personal educational purposes. If you are learning how to program, then feel free to use this video as a reference on how to do like a dark light flashlight scenario uh, for your own games. Um, I do not own any of the assets in this video, so please don't reuse them or anything unless it's for personal purposes. With, you're not selling it or anything. I'm not selling anything here. This is just for personal educational purposes um, so that people can use similar systems to kind of like design their own games and stuff. So um, feel free to have some fun with it. Just check out this awesome tutorial. And yeah, if you ever decide to create a game of your own that involves like a dark room or even a foggy room, I even show you how to do like if you have like a daytime fog, uh, that works as well. Um, but yeah, feel free to just have some fun with it and let's start. So the first thing you'll want to do is import the Haunting of Castle Malloy map onto your Construct 3 uh, application. You can do that by just navigating to the load and to the load screen and just feel free to just import it that way. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put it on a layer, which will be just the default layer, layer zero. Um, and just kind of drag it out. The project size of my application is, um, if we go to the view here, it's 1280 by 720, which is HD, but on the actual layer itself, it is 4400 by 2800. You can mix and match and mess around with those values, but you'll see why in a few moments why that it's very important. The second thing that you'll want to do is create a sprite. And to do that, as long as you're in your layout, just go ahead and double click anywhere. You can also right click your object types and do add new object type. One thing that I like to do is put all my object types in a subfolder and I call it sprites or characters or player. Um, just do whatever works for you. And then just feel free to just right click and do add new object type and then scroll down and select Sprite. I like to prefix my Sprite names with SPR underscore, but feel free to do whatever is comfortable for you. But in this case, let's do SPR Nancy or SPR character or SPR player. Um, something that works for you that gets the point across and then hit insert. What that will do is it'll insert the sprite into the scene and it'll also open the animations editor. Um, for the Since we don't have a sprite or anything to use, feel free to go ahead and select the, um, the bucket, the paint bucket tool, select the color of your choice and then just paint the sprite. Um, we don't really have any animations at the moment, but that's okay. We, we don't really need animations for what we're trying to do specifically right now. Put it, I want you to put it, um, if you hold control and then you use your scroll wheel to zoom in, I want you to put the sprite um, at the bottom of the map where kind of like where Nancy starts the game, uh, where she crashed her car. I would put it there and make it really tiny. Um, Another thing I want you to notice is the dotted margins here. So when you insert a sprite into the scene, it probably won't be as big. It'll probably be like just big enough that it will uh, fulfill the dotted lines of the margin here. What this is is called the viewport. This is what the player will see um, on their screen. And if you think the viewport is too small, you can increase it by going to project properties, view, and then viewport size. But just keep in mind that this is for the project as a whole, not just... Uh, for this one scene. Um, but what we want to do is, um, because this is like a scrolling map, um, if I were to just like um, export this program and run it, um, also you're not going to see it, it's not going to work properly, I have to move this back here. Um, what's going to happen is, is that um, you'll see, you'll see a large portion of this, you'll see the map, but the map is huge. And then like, Nancy yourself is also ginormous. So if you're, I would do that if your game is 
<clears throat> if it's something like Escape from Monkey Island where you want like a bigger token character and then like a smaller map to make it seem more easy to traverse. But if you want that like bigger open world map feel, you're going to have to make the, the, the layout larger. And this is something you're going to have to just mess around with. Um, like I said, for me, my layout size is 4,400 by 2,800. And what that means is like it's this it's just the, this big giant rendered box, a 2D like box. And then the viewport with the screen the player sees is the 1280 by 720. And just for a friendly reminder, um, if you look at the, if you look right here at the mouse position, notice that zero zero is near the top left, and then as you go right across the screen, the x value increases, and as you go down the screen, the y value increases. So um, just keep that in mind with your x and y coordinates. So anyway, what we're gonna do is uh, now that we have our Nancy object created, um, let's put it back where we were supposed to have it, which is like somewhere right there, make it small. Um, let's click it and then go to behaviors. There are two behaviors that we want the Nancy object to have. We want the scroll to behavior. What this is, is that um, the viewport, the 1280 by 720 viewport will automatically scroll to whatever object it's assigned to. So at the start of the layout, instead of being at position like zero, zero, it will automatically automatically put itself um, in the center of wherever the character object is located. So that's the first uh, one we want. The second one we want is the eight direction. Um, what the eight direction is, is um, it's a type of physics behavior that allows uh, movement from up, down, left, right, and diagonals. This is really, really important. So when you enter it in the scene, um, you're gonna get some toolbar stuff going on here. For scroll two, it's just enabled behavior. Um, and then if you go to eight direction, you'll have some other stuff. Um, the max speed is just the max speed at which the, the object will travel. Acceleration and deceleration, um, I want you to look at it like a car. So like when you're hitting the gas pedal on a car, um, your car is accelerating to a certain speed. And then deceleration, if you let go of the car's gas pedal, the car will slowly get to go to a stop. Um, but it will probably, it'll probably, the car will mostly likely stay the same speed for a little while and then slowly dip down to zero. So what I like to do for my games is I like to set the acceleration and deceleration to like some wild number like 9999. That way, when the player moves, they, there's no acceleration. They just immediately start moving. And then for the deceleration, if they let go of the arrow key, then they stop. There's no, like, sliding. Kind of like a leisurely walk in real life. Like, if you were to move, you just start moving. Um, and then if you were to stop, you just kind of abruptly stop. Kind of like a leisurely walk. Granted, if we were doing like a run or a you know a vehicle, we might actually have to do acceleration and deceleration. But for these situations, we wouldn't have to do that. And then for directions, you can also specify what directions the player is allowed to travel up and down, left and right. This would be good for like elevator movement or like if you're going up and down stairs or something. Left and right for platformers. Four directions if it's just up, down, left, right, north, south, east, west. And then eight directions if you consider like north, south, east, west, northwest, southwest. Um, northeast, southeast. So like it's, I usually just do eight directions since that allows diagonals. Set angle, the way that works, um, basically um, setting the angle will rotate the sprite a certain direction. So if, uh, if, it, if it's turned off, the sprite will not rotate at all. But if it's turned on, it'll rotate either smoothly. So it'll like rotate as it turns. Um, and then 45 and 90 degree angle just locks the sprite in a certain um, situation where like it'll only turn at like 45 degree angles or 90 degree angles. Um, I just turn it off because we're not going to rotate it. I would This would be useful if the object was a car or some kind of vehicle or if you have a character in your environment that would make it would make it would make more sense to rotate in, but we don't really need that. Allow sliding. What this does is it moves along sloped obstacles and slides along them rather than stopping. So if Nancy were to hit a wall or something, she would slide um if it was like a sloped wall though if it was like a 90 degree wall i believe she would just stop but if it's sloped she would travel up the wall or down the wall depending on the direction of the player is moving and then finally we also have like default controls and enabled default controls allows you to use the arrow keys to simulate movement um if you want to do the wasd keys um you have to use the simulate control action which i will show as well and then finally enable just allows you to enable and disable so the two the two prop the behaviors you want in this scene are going to be for the for the nancy object is scroll to and eight direction. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to get ready to put the transparency layer on top of the map. But before we do that, I just want to run and test real quick because you should always test your game before you do anything specific. Also, I forgot to um, let me make this initially not visible so you can see how it look on your end prior to doing any transparency. So if you were to run your game without doing the transparency layer and you're at the step that like for my video, um, notice how when you move around the arrow keys, uh, Nancy moves and it scrolls along the environment. So as you can see here, um, we don't have any darkness. Um, the game has a scroll to behavior enabled, so we're zoomed in and we're just navigating around the environment, just like the game. So let's go ahead and close that out for a moment. Um, so like I was saying before, um, the scroll to behavior will um, adapt based on the size of your layout. So you're going to want to make sure that you're going to want to mix around and mix and match how you feel is comfortable for you. If you like your layout to be bigger or smaller, uh, that will make an impact. Notice how I made the map smaller no, and, how, and how my green object is larger. So you're going to have to scale things appropriately um, and you're just going to have to keep messing around with it. I Like I said before, I liked the size of of this and I think it's big enough for me um, you just want to make sure that your layout size also is big enough because if this is too, let's, let's say for example you make it too big and it's outside the boundaries of the layout um, what will happen is uh, you could have issues with the with the game recognizing objects that are outside the layout you might have issues especially if there are objects that don't respond to logic outside the layout so you just want to be careful and make sure that your environment fits the actual environment um one thing you could do too is is that if you're uh, let's say for your, your size of your environment is 4400 by 2800 you can copy it and paste it into the size box and it will actually make the size of the environment and then all you would have to do is just position it you know relative to the size of the box um um, if you per, if you're more precise, but um, yeah, let's let's get let's move forward to the transparency now. So um, you're gonna want to go ahead and you're gonna want to create a new layer. Um, so layer zero, I'm gonna call I, layer zero is like the default layer, and this is just kind of like the background layer. Um, this is kind of like where Nancy is on. So like Nancy and the background are on this layer. The layer above it, however, is the transparency layer, and this is like the darkness layer. Um, where you'll have that darkness special effect. So what you're wanting in order to do that, you just have to right click and do add layer at top. So select your zero and then you do add layer at top and it will add this layer. Um, there are some changes you're going to want to make. Um, the first change is that you um, make sure it's visible. Um, I turned it off for the purpose of showing you an example. Um, you also want it to be interactive. Um, all of these effects here will remain the same. So scale rate, 100, parallax, all that. Um, as far as the transparency goes, um, make sure transparent is set to unchecked. And then make the background color black. I think by default it's just some other color. Make the background color of this black. Um, so if transparent is checked, what it'll do is um, it will uh, be see-through, where if it is not checked, then you can have a background color that is on top of it. And then the opacity, um, zero transparent to 100 opaque, just keep it as 100, and then force on texture, um, just keep that checked as well. So why don't we go ahead and test this and see how it looks. Um, also, one more thing to note, these checkboxes, um, if you have them checked, then they show the layer. If they're unchecked, then they hide the layer so you can mess around with other objects. So um, make sure that they're checked so you know what you're doing. And let me go ahead and just show you all what it looks like. So if it's transparent, you can see through the layer. If it's unchecked, then you can see that. And if I change the background color, it'll affect the way the layer looks. So you, if you want like a red background or like a foggy, like let's say for example, you wanted like a more foggy mist, um, instead of like a back, like if you wanted like a foggy environment, <clears throat> so like it's morning time and you want it foggy, that would work. Um, but yeah, I, I, for the purpose of trying to emulate the original game, we're going to make it black. And then again, if you want the opacity up, so let's say we would lower the opacity to like 50%, notice how you can still see around it. So let's, let's go ahead and play the game. Um, Notice how you can still see around you, but the effect of the light is not as strong. So that's why you want the opacity to be pretty high. Um, we're going to set it to 100 so that it's not as transparent as you can see here. So um, as far as other things go, um, 
that's pretty much it. So make sure that yours matches mine. I'll just keep that for a second if you want to like pause the video or something. But as long as it looks like that, then you should be good. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a new sprite um, on this layer. So make sure this layer is selected and then go to either double click to create a new sprite or feel free to put it if you have it organized in your objects. I have mine unorganized, but um, make sure to just go ahead and insert an object. Um, go to sprite and then in the animation editor um, what you're going to want to do this one this one I grabbed from a construct 3 example project but um, feel free to make whatever you want um, as long as you make a like even if you draw a white circle um, that would be totally fine that that would totally work as well the one I grabbed like I said before is from an example project that actually emulates um, darkness and light with a flashlight but um, I just grabbed this example one um, I can also include a link to that project in the in the description so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to put that light in your environment and what's gonna happen is is the light when you put it in your environment is probably going to look like this it's probably just going to look like a generic white circle um the reason for that is because we need to add some effects to it so effects are really cool um let's go ahead to the construct website for a moment so according to the construct documentation which i highly recommend you look at um, they change the visual appearance of objects and they can be added to layers and layouts and there's so many cool effects that construct has built in like water effects and all kinds of cool stuff um, and then what we want to look at though is blend mode so according to the construct documentation blend mode provides a simple set of predefined ways to blend the object with the background click here to open an example of blend modes in construct so that's what I did. I have this open and I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of the, what the blend modes are like. So <clears throat> the blend mode property can be set to the following. The, note the logo has an area of transparency around it to make it clear what each blend mode does. Um, so what I want you to take a note of is the construct logo. So if there's none, they just appear together. If it's additive, then look at the way, look how it's like kind of like a transparency almost copy like destination over source in destination in source out destination out so there's a lot of really cool blend modes um the one that we're going to be using is actually the destination out um and if you need to look up more of what these blend modes do and why they do what they do feel free to consult this i'll include a link to this as well to that art to this article as well so you can kind of like take a look at it but um yeah this is pretty much um what the project looks like and you can actually mess around with this project as well but for the sake of what we're doing we're going to do a blend mode and the blend mode that we're going to be doing is destination out so what that does is it uh filters out that white color so that what you see is the flash it's kind of like this flashlight effect where you can kind of like see around um kind of giving off that special effect and you can make it as large and small as you want so notice i made the flashlight like really big um or you can make it super tiny and super small too so like you can you can really mess around with it and um and for the sake of messing around with it um you, you can definitely do whatever you'd like um, now we're going to go ahead and jump into behaviors. So this sprite also needs some behaviors. So not only do we need the destination out effect, but we also need some behaviors added to it. Um, feel free to click on behaviors and go to add new behavior. And it's going to need the move to, um, this, if you, the description for this says move an object to a position with an acceleration and deacceleration. So click, double click it to apply it to the light. And then I have some properties that I have set. Um, very similarly to the um, to the Nancy sprite, we have max speed, acceleration, it's same things. Um, feel free to set it to what I set it to, which is nine 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 nine. Oops. Um, so that way, like it, the, the light is kind of the same speed as Nancy herself. And then um, for like rotate speed, zero, set angle, not unchecked, stop on solids, unchecked. Um, we want this, we want this to be like a light and not like a physical object in the environment. So make sure that your settings match my settings from the screen. Um, the other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put this near Nancy. Cause look what happens if I don't put it near Nancy, the screen will start out blank and then the, the object is going to make its way <laughs> slowly over to Nancy. So you don't want to do that cause then it'll seem really random. So, um, what I would do is already center the object around Nancy so that when the screen starts, uh, there's no, um, there's no waiting time for that. So what you're also going to want to do is there is an event sheet that, that is going on here. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to, you're going to want to create an event that says every tick basically is just as long as the game is running, um, have the light move to Nancy. 
Um, if you don't do that, if you don't have this, uh, if, you, if we just go ahead and toggle, toggle this as disabled, I'll show you what happens. Um, the light will not follow Nancy. The light will just stay play, stay in place and just stay where it is. So what you're going to want to do, again, I'll just repeat myself. Um, so you have this object. Uh, you want to open the event sheet, which is associated with this. And then what you're going to want to do is add an event. You want to go to system. And then you're going to go to every tick. Um, it runs the actions every tick, a.k.a. always. And then um, what you're going to do is you're going to go into your light object and then um, whenever you add behaviors to an object it actually adds the behaviors to this so what you're going to want to do is move to uh, an object so let's see move to object right here and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select nancy and then um, i think the image point is just like for the object's origin which i can actually mention um whether to move directly or at a new waypoint uh just do direct and then go ahead and hit done. So again, this is the same thing. It's the same thing as the one above. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and just you know use my original one. Um, and then as far as like the image origin point, if you open up Nancy and you select this little icon here, uh, the image points, um, the origin is set to the middle of the character's uh, um, like they're the center of the character you can change that by selecting these and you can make that or origin different you can also just click it to make the origin different um i'm going to try my best to put it back in the center but um that is basically what the origin work how the origin works and that just basically is how the object is rendered on the scene um but yeah i would just keep it the way it is keep it default for now and let's go ahead and just run this and just show you so as you can see here the light is officially um is officially following nancy and as you can see here we are emulating this original the original like movement of the character so that's pretty much all there is to it as long as you're um using the destination and you're having it follow the object the character you can basically re-emulate uh this game and this is and i this is kind of like my take on how i think the developers created this haunting of castle malloy they basically had a background layer with a character on it um a destination out layer that was like that like filtered it out and then they basically just had um they basically just had this follow the character and as you can see here we're just making our way through the game so it's just super fun super simple um it's always fun to learn how to do coding and programming and um, it's always fun to kind of like rebuild these scenes and environments. Thank you for checking out my programmer diary videos of how to use Construct 3 in different ways, especially if you're planning to make your own adventure game or if you want to see like how similar systems might have been made. Um, if you have any feedback or comments that you want to make regarding the tutorial of this video or how to do certain things, feel free to drop a comment below. Also, if you liked this video, feel free to like and subscribe and share it with some friends that maybe are trying to get into programming. Um, if there are any additional tutorials you want me to show you how to do in Construct 3 for adventure games, feel free to also send that over to me either on YouTube or my Discord channel at the Talent Gamer Joe channel. Um, and yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, one more time for a disclaimer, I do not own some of those assets in the project. This was just for free, just for educational, personal uses. Um, that's really all there is. It's just an educational video on showing people how to code and how to program. And um, that's pretty much all there is to it. But once again, thank you so much for viewing the video and see you next time.